Scraping with selenium is slow, but as I've been using it more and more recently, I made this quick change that can speed it up multiple times and it's very simple to implement. It requires a little more initial setup and changing a few lines of code, but it's the only way that I'll use selenium now. I'll show you exactly what you need to change, how best to manage it, and the benefits of using Selenium this way over the traditional method. First, I can imagine you are sat there thinking, well, why would I be wanting to use Selenium in the first place for scraping? Aren't there multiple different better options for it? And yes, this is often the case. Uh, I always go and look to see if I can reverse engineer an API first, or maybe there's a load of data hidden in the script tag that we can use. But sometimes you really just do need that real browser there to pass JavaScript tests, or maybe to click on buttons and move around the site. It's a good skill to know to have, and by the end of this video, I think you're gonna wanna give this method a go to. Here's the code that we're starting with. If I come down to the function that runs everything, you'll see that we have our standard driver, web driver, and I'm using Firefox in this case. From here, we then create our item list and use the run function to get the information from this URL and do all the stuff that we want to. So if I was to run this here, you'll see that Firefox is gonna start up on the right-hand side. It's going to go to the URL, flick through the pages like I asked it to. It's closing in between each product and I'll I'll tell you why I did that in just a minute because it's all loading up. Now, this is inherently relatively slow because we have to start up that browser each time. Now, what we can do though is we can actually look at something called grid. Now, what we want to do is we want to have our browser available to us that we can ask it to do something with. And the beauty with grid is that not only will it queue our requests, it can also handle multiple sessions. So if I was, if I come and we look at uh, Selenium grid, let's go to our browser and open it up here and let's take a quick look. So I think grid has been updated recently and it's been it's really easy to use, but what we can do is we got a couple of different options of how we can run it and a few different ways that we can run it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the, I don't know if it's the easiest, but it just requires this Java and you run this file. We're gonna use this and then I'll show you how to use it with Docker, which is my preferred method, how to connect to it and how you can change your code, like I'm gonna do with my code here, to use grid and then we'll introduce some concurrency at the end so we can run multiple web browsers in parallel and speed our whole thing up tenfold. So that's the plan. So as you can see here, it says you can start it using uh, Java, which is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna open up a new terminal and I have this already here. It's gonna run this and it's gonna run a Selenium manager. So once this has started up, we get this URL, which we can open up and if I move the Terminal out of the way, you can see now that we have the Selenium grid running on my local machine. We have no sessions going at the moment, but here is the most the best part of it, which is we have max concurrency of 12, which is my CPU on my machine here. So how do we actually change our code to connect to this and use this to run instead of starting the browser as our code runs on our local machine? So we're going to come down to our uh, web driver here, which I'm going to remove. And what we need to do is, I'm, I'm gonna actually use Chrome now, is we need to say our options is gonna be equal to uh, webdriver.options.chrome uh, options, and then we want to connect to our remote driver here, which is this what our grid is. Webdriver.remote, like this, and we need to give it a couple of commands, a couple of things that we wanna do. So here you can see, we wanna know the command executor, which is going to be our grid URL, and then the options that we've given it, which is just gonna be our Chrome options. So let's have this here. I've got too many brackets here. So we'll have our command executor, and this is gonna be our URL. So I'm just gonna copy this over. We don't need the UI part. And then our options is gonna be equal to the options for Chrome, which we just created above. Super, so now that that's done, I'm gonna format this with black and that's gonna move it across neatly there. And that's it, that's all we need to change to actually start to use grid and it's not difficult and we've, we've run it nice and easily. So let's run this code again using grid and we'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm actually gonna move this over to this screen, we'll put grid on this one, let's save and let's run now. So we'll do pi, our grid version, and we'll come back over here and you'll see that it's loaded up and we had one session here going and you can see we're using Chrome and it's worked exactly the same way. 
But this was no quicker really, uh, because we were only using one browser. So how do we make it so we can use all of the sessions available to us? And that's with concurrent futures. So I'm gonna do from uh, concurrent futures, we're gonna import in the thread pool executor here. What this allows us to do is it allows us to use a context manager with where we can give it our run function and our, our items list, which is essentially what we're doing here in this uh, loop. So we're doing, here's all of our items and we're doing our run here. We're gonna give it this and we say, just go for it. And we'll let the concurrent futures handle everything for us. And because we're connecting to our grid, we'll have multiple sessions. So let's change this. We don't want this here. We want our uh, concurrent futures. So we'll do with our thread pool executor. Now you can put max workers in here. Uh, by default, it will just take the most it can do. So we'll leave that is, and we'll do, we'll call this as executor. And now we want to do our executor and we wanna use the map function here. This is gonna say, take your callable and your iterable. So our callable is our run function and our iterable are our items list now. So what I'm gonna do is we'll come back out of this and we will run this again. And we're gonna see multiple browsers coming up and that's because we are running them together. Now, this, uh, for the keen eyed among you, you will have seen that we had two browsers come up despite 12 different sessions. And that's simply because my products list is only too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some more products now. Now we have four, so we should have four different sessions straight away starting up. And as you can see, they're all working at the same time to pull the reviews up to the maximum number of pages that I said. So we've gone from going on one page at a time, opening the browser, then closing it, then opening a new one, to opening and closing the browser across multiple sessions using Grid. So you may not want to run Grid like this. I'm going to stop this, the Jar, the uh, the JavaScript thing, the uh, Java version here. And there is obviously a better way. So we do want to run this in Docker. I think this is the more preferred option rather than the Java version. So what I've got here is my Docker Compose .yaml file. Now this is very straightforward. You can just copy this. Uh, I'll leave a link to it so you can just pull this down. And as long as you've got Docker installed on your machine, this will do everything for you. So what we're doing is we're saying we want the Chrome service. And here we are, we're saying the maximum sessions we want is 12. If you don't have this number put up to whatever your uh, CPU can handle, then you're gonna end up with no extra sessions that you can't really do anything with. So here we're gonna do docker compose up, and this is gonna find that docker compose file, and you can see that I'm having to re-download the Selenium version. This is what's gonna happen for you when you run this the first time. It's going to install all the images you need, and then it's gonna run the Selenium hub grid, the same as what we were looking at with the Java file that's gonna give you that URL that you can actually work with. So I'm just going to let this install again and then I'll come back to you when it's done. So I can see here that Grid has started up and we are on 172.18.02.444.18.0.2 and port 4444 and here we are back on our Grid. So this is exactly the same as what we had before except just we have just the 12 Chrome instances so all you need to do is use this URL into your remote web driver code and this will work exactly the same. Now the benefits obviously of using Docker is that we can actually run this on a server. You can run this across multiple machines. And once you get a bit more advanced into it, which is kind of what I'm looking at at the moment, is you can spawn up and down sessions and nodes as you need and connect to your grid. So you can expand and contract your Selenium grid your different sessions and nodes as much as you need to. So that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed this, I recommend that you go ahead and you give this a go. Take whatever code that you've got that uses Selenium and fire up grid, install Docker, use the Docker Compose that I'll link to, let it do its thing and see if this will help you out. Make sure you use concurrency though, otherwise it's not gonna be worth it. Join the Discord, like this video, subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff. Loads of cool stuff coming, loads more web scraping stuff coming. If you can't wait, this video right here is gonna be really interesting to you if you wanna learn more about the web scraping that I do.